Do you think anyone can get good if they just like paint, paint, paint? Yeah, I'm, of I'm not saying they're gonna be exceptional, just good. Yeah, of course. If, if anything that you practice, you eventually become good at it. Okay. It's kind of that question, is it about talent or is it more about practice and experience? Is it both? There is such a thing as being uh, innately born with talent. Like, uh, that's the... Is it? Yeah, that's the, the old Messi versus Ronaldo debate. Like, Messi... Do you believe that? Yeah. You can you can be born with uh, an inclination towards something that you just your your body is just built for it basically or like you have certain uh, inclination sure I you have you have you have the right temperament to to understand something quicker like I think that I've always been a patient person even as a kid I was always pretty much I was I always like to like play with my toys just in solitude and make up little stories and little games and I think that. That, te that temperament of being patient is good for drawing because you need to be patient on while drawing and it's good for storytelling. And I'm, I consider myself, I, an avid, I love telling stories. So there's some things that you are born with that on your temperament that makes you prone to then learning future skills that are perceived good. That's the Messi versus Ronaldo debate where Ronaldo is amazing because his temperament was obsession, was to obsessively work, work, work to become uh, the best. Yeah, And while Messi was more inclined to play he he enjoyed just the, the artistry of feeling the ball to his feet and also because messi is shorter lower center of gravity dribbling is easier to him it comes it, like controlling the ball close to his body which is a very difficult talent it was just something he had the the build to do better uh, ronald being tall and lanky he might have power but he doesn't have as as grace he can like force his body to be agile but he will never be as agile as messi who was just born that way mm. So and that also applies to uh, to dancers. To uh, obviously the the biggest example is uh, runway models. They're clearly born with beauty. <laughs> uh, and, I don't know uh, if I agree with that. From my understanding, it's like most of them just gotta be skinny as shit, and that's that's just dedication. Yeah, but there's also a lot to do with uh, with body oh, genetics. Yeah, yeah, you need to have some certain bone structure and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. And Alex is saying most people are afraid of doing things and failing, so they never get started. That's another thing. The road thing, yeah. to being good, yep. and the road to being good at things comes with accepting failure. That is yeah, yeah, uh, it's two hundred percent true. Yeah, and Seth has like a, a few entries on his blog about um, his. Well, I wouldn't say failures, but his <laughs> perception of his failures on his yeah. Uh, most illustrations. of the most of the time, your failure is not like when you do something. Ah, like, oh, fuck! I. I Ruined it. It's shit. It's absolute trash to garbage. And if you show it to someone else, it circles like, dude, that's good. Like most of your failures in your own perception is what you what you wanted to take out of it. What was your goal of it to begin with? Right. It's expectations against uh, yeah, yeah, reality. implementation or whatever reality. Yeah, and Alex says, which is awfully rich coming from me. Well, I don't know, Alex. So maybe it's a message to you. No, so everyone everyone struggles with that shit. Like, even right now, I'm fairly aware that this drawing isn't going as like I want it to, but I'm just having a, a jolly good time um, with the conversation. I, I have a, 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 a kind of um, a test of um, judgment, let's say. Mm. So uh, there, was a, uh, there was this girl that um, painted. She was decent. She was good. And um, one day she was drunk. And she took the painting that she had already, well, arguably finished, and she decided to paint uh, over it. The next day, when she was sober, she she realized she completely messed that up. <laughs> now, what what is, what is your judgment on that? I mean, depends on your personality. Some people, some people deal with that really well. Like, um, I had an, an art teacher that basically, as soon as he finished the painting he would be okay with destroying his art because he said that painting is always transformative. Like, it's art is always transformative. Like, you can't hold on to it. You can't be precious about every fucking line that you what, draw. What does this mean, transformative? Like, what, what does it transform? What does it mean? Why, why? No, no, the question is, why does being transformative imply you can destroy it? Because it is telling you not to be precious for about your work. Like, not to be... Um, not to be obsessed with it, like, oh, I draw this, this line was perfect, I'll never be able to do it again. No, it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter that you'll never be able to do it again. That's the point of art. The next line you'll make will be different. 
Like then if you you can do the same art piece twice, both times will be different. You shouldn't be precious to the work that you have. Only precious, the only focus on the work that you can still do, and that's basically he he burned his art pieces as, as like a statement to that effect. And I to some point I agree with him. Like some people, and I'm I'm guilty of this. Like some people get really pissed off if imagine that you walked into my into my office right now and you just started you just like fucked up my drawing. I mean, dude, what the fuck? And then you saved. It's like, oh, dude, fucking hell. Now I'm gonna have to redo the, the painting part. Fuck you. But I think most people would be angry if yeah, someone else did it. If, if it was your choice, it's your choice. But yeah, it's a bit of a dickish move. But that's why I was saying that that girl is kind of curious because she did it to herself. So if she has the mindset of, if she has the mindset of, oh, you know what? Let's work with this. Now it's more abstract. Let's let's work with what we've done. Uh, okay. Then, then I guess she'd be okay with it. But if she's like me and and, and like most artists, oh, goddamn, now it's really now I have to start over again. Uh, this is a uh, peepers with Benny moment. Let's let's uh, let's admire how Peeps loves the baby boy Benny. Uh, okay. Mm. Ah, the big... cat must be like, mm, your voice is soothing to me, Sev. <laughs> Keep talking. Yes, mm. I will rest. Mm. So, uh, so yeah. Meow. I suppose that uh, some people, like, if she is the, the sort to like have to be very precious with her work, which she seems to have been, uh, yeah, it sucks. But don't get so drunk next time. No, girl. she was laughing about it. And I was like, nah, well, that's, that's good. Silly. That's good. That's a good mentality to have, I think. That's silly. But uh, yeah, it was kind of sad, in my opinion. But whatever. I guess it, it is, you know, it doesn't matter. It, it is done. As Alex says, the art has already been made. For you, it's over. That's it. Me, yeah. When I don't know what controls. Me ah me when I don't know what control plus that is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is the did, did you undo know, button. Just random fact. Did you know you cannot spell homeowner without meow? Home owner. Oh no, very good. Very good. <laughs> There's some random posts from some people online. <laughs> yeah, that's very Tumblr of you. <laughs> but I like it, I like it. And people always get confused and like, oh, that's nice. So you can't have a home without a, a cat, I guess. True, did, did I, ever... I I agree with that statement. Cats are awesome. Did, did, you, did you ever have dogs? Not much of a dog person? Are I am animals, a huge a dog person. person. I, love, I love animals and I do love dogs especially. However, uh, yeah, I've never, I've always lived in small apartments. And I always wanted oh, right, a big right. dog, so I think it's irresponsible to just get a dog. Uh, and also, I live alone most of the time. And now it's fine because I work from home, so I'd always have enough time for the dog. But if I lived alone and then I needed to go to work, it means that the dog would sit like six hours by himself, and right, I, I, right. Didn't, I didn't want to do that. There, there is, a, there is a like a small. I, I, I prefer cats because I feel like dogs need too much attention. I mean, I, I, I like dogs, but I think having a dog would be would require a lot of uh, attention. Um, uh, and one thing that I always struggle in my mind is I'm thinking if I ever had a, have a cat or a dog I feel kind of bad like I have to neuter them would I neuter them would I not what would I do about it because on one hand I feel kind of bad you know making that decision for them <laughs> well, and on the other hand like I don't want to deal with the consequences of not doing it yeah that's so pretty I, much it when you neuter so the dog is decide, yeah then I decide so I'll, I'll just not have one then yeah, when you neuter any animal, basically you're you're deciding, well, no more offspring for you, and it it can be a, a gamble, as Alex is saying. It's actually better to neuter dogs. It's also better to neuter cats because they become less territorial, and if they spend most of the time at home, that is a benefit. Um, however, yeah, if you want to like breed and have like offsprings of your of your dogs, um, yeah, it's nice to not neuter them, I suppose. Yeah, but I mean, like, morally, I feel kind of bad making that decision. <laughs> morally. I don't know. I feel kind of bad. Like, why Why should I make that decision? Like, if I'm going to make that decision, might as well just not have dogs and cats. Like, just leave them be. Oh. I mean, if obviously, if I could, like, you know, just have a huge garden and then they just walk around. But then... Uh, I mean, vaccines. I, I would. Uh, I would vaccinate them. That's not. That's not a, a question. Are you anti-vaxer? No this is on YouTube. Careful, careful. Which, yeah, be uh, very so careful no, with your next statement. No, no moral issues about that. They would definitely get vaxxed. But neutering. That's that's a bit. Because vaccines is like you're putting something in and like you know, uh, your body will deal with it. But then neutering is like taking things out. I'm like, oh, is it fair of me to make that decision for you? I mean, I feel kind of bad. 
but I mean, if I did have one, I would, but because of that, I, it's one of the reasons I, I, I don't. Like, another reason is, uh, yeah, just, I, I would probably have a cat. It's easier to, to manage. And then I feel bad, like, you know, if I don't have time to spend with the animal, like you were saying, if you were working, like, I don't want the cat or the dog to be alone at home. They would probably need a friend, so probably two. Like, I don't want to have one. You have, to, how, you have two cats or just the one? I got two boys. <clears throat> two boys. Two chunky boys. Uh, one chunky boy and one s one slim uh, serpent. Slim shady. That reminds me, going back to House of the Dragon. <laughs> I have no idea how I'm gonna edit this episode, by the way, uh, f for YouTube. I love the dragon designs. Like each dragon feels different, and I like the long, like serpenty one. We I, we call him the noodle the noodle dragon, uh, and I like the big okay. badass dragon that looks ugly as sin. Oh uh, right right right. Okay, good. Yeah, because the, the in the first one there were like like three dragons and they were the same-ish, right? Yeah, in, pretty in much. Game of Thrones. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Oh no, the dragon died. Who? The, the Vexar, Viserion. Who? Which one is uh, that? What's fair, going on? To be to be fair, I think we talked about this maybe on the episode. That scene where you know, the White Walker takes the the dude mm. and makes him them his. I mean, that wasn't like oh, I uh, definitely did not see that coming. But it's like, oh, well, I definitely did not see that coming now. Mm. Like, oh my god, that's awesome. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, this this dragon thing is weird, like, in the show. Is it like just, oh, we're we're masters? Why do the dragons even submit themselves to this? Because dragon? of magic! Is it magic? What magic? That wasn't uh, explained. Explain that to me. I, yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. even implied. I do agree with you that that, is a, that seems a little bit uh, out of fucking nowhere. It's, it, it, it's not even, but I mean, I don't want to... Dragons throw, and Targaryen just have this bond. You wouldn't understand. You'd need to be a Targaryen. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, I guess they're kind of put in a crib when, when they're born together. So, like, but yeah. why would one obey the other? Why isn't it the other way? Like, the dragon controls the human. And then... And then the equal says, rights. Equal yeah. rights. <laughs> And then the dragon goes, Dracarys, and then the human just pukes all over the place. Like, after, <laughs> like, a, like a cat, uh, like spitting out a furball. Dracarys! <laughs> oh, it's a furball. It's a furball. <laughs> uh, anyway, I have been, have been not, not paying attention to chat, but... I don't think chat has been... Uh, Alex. Uh, warning news on Ukraine. They blew the, the Simeon Bridge. Crimean Bridge, yeah. Crimean. Well, good for the Ukrainians, well, I suppose. The Russians. I don't know, man. Let that uh, let that thing settle in, then we'll talk about it. I don't. I don't know. This is this is a mess, and then I just hope it ends quicker than later. You know. For, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. for for re just for uh, reference sake, Jay here is uh, my co-host is uh, part Ukrainian. I mean, are you full Ukrainian or what? Well, I bloodwise I'm Ukrainian, I guess. Mm. Uh, I I was born in Ukraine, but then grew up in Portugal. Yeah. I don't consider myself Ukrainian. I will tell you. Last time I went to Ukraine, I felt more foreigner than anywhere else I've been. And I was in China, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Malaysia, and I felt very foreign in in Ukraine. I just didn't belong there at all. And uh, yeah, but I was don't it feel Ukrainian? But was it hmm? mostly because of uh, like cultural reasons or like uh, you just? You, know, you just didn't relate with the, the population anymore. It just seemed different to you. Yeah, it's culture. I just didn't vibe. I don't know. I asked my father. He was saying, oh, you know, it's because of the it's former Soviet Union education or something. Or maybe it's tension because, I mean, there wasn't full-on war, but there was tension uh, with Russia for, for a long time. Like, it, it, pretty much since the Soviet Union fell, there was tension with Russia. But that, that when I went there, I mean, more recently it was the Maidan thing, and then they ha they were still fighting in Donbass region. Like that 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 fighting mm. has been going on for a while. Like, it's it's not a new thing. Yeah, it's not a new thing. It's been going on since 2014 or whatever. It and it has been happening. This is not a new thing. This is just an escalation. Uh, so yeah, but I just didn't. Uh, I don't know. I just didn't vibe with the people. I felt it just didn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, you the just way didn't people relate. behaved. Yeah, I couldn't re relate really. Yeah, with the with the mentality, the mind process. I mean, it was different and some somewhat familiar, I guess. But it just, I didn't, I didn't belong. Mm. It's not right or wrong. I just didn't belong. I just didn't feel. 
Uh, like I remember, I came back to Portugal after being for... Said, so I was in Ukraine for, I think, a month and a half. And the first week I was almost depressed because I felt like it was so just just dark and people yeah. are not smiling. And then I got used to it and I didn't care. And then I came back to Portugal and I took a bus somewhere. And I, I just asked the bus driver, like, hey, uh, I need to get off at this station. Um, is it the next one or is it the one after that? And the bus driver, before answering me, he started smiling. And I, I was just, I just felt so warm and I was like, oh my God, people smile when they talk to you? What is this? Jeez, how long were you in Ukraine? You, sp you speak like if you were prisoned there yeah, for 10 years. No, no they, they don't smile at all. It's the weirdest thing. Like I had a lady come over to us and she was dead serious. Like, oh, are you? Because we were waiting for a bus and uh, it, like the bus drivers don't have specific um, clothing or stuff. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the bus, me and my father or my father and I. And uh, she came to us like dead serious face. It's like almost scary. Like, oh, uh. Are you the drivers? When are we going to depart? I okay, no, sorry, we're not the drivers. And, was, and she just left. No, thank you. No, thank you. I was she wondering, left. I was wondering if she got pissed. That happens. I've seen it. No, she just left the same face, no emotion whatsoever. Mm. And it felt so cold. And I mean, obviously not everyone is like that. And if you're in a familiar environment, if you're with friends, people are not like that. Yeah. But I felt like among strangers, people are very, very cold. Like, it's extremely cold. Like, I went to the shop and I just asked for some information. Oh, I want fizzy water. Where can I get the fizzy wa water? She's Up like, your ass, curious. bitch! And she's like, can't you see it? It's in that aisle. I'm like, uh, All right, sorry. sorry Christ, uh, <laughs> go back to your goddamn Facebook page, bitch. Sorry, I'm sorry you have to work here, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but maybe that was just a sequence of bad experiences. Maybe that's not representative, you know? Maybe just just... A month and a half is not enough. And one thing people told me, like, "Oh, you're here in the winter. People are more people are more gloomy in winter. You should be here in summer. People are happier." Maybe that's true. I haven't been there in the summer in a long time. Maybe. But then when summer came, well, you know, the war came. So I'm glad I wasn't there. Anyway. And they weren't as happy. Uh, Jay, talk about salary discrepancies in Portugal and abroad. I think you know a lot about that, and it's a controversial topic. Uh, fix this salary discrepancies. Well, I don't think I know a lot about that. I, I, I mean, I have friends who, who worked abroad uh, longer than I have, and uh, and uh, he decided, well, you know, I might as well look for work in Portugal. Give it a go. Let's try. And he got a job, and I spoke to him a few months after he had gotten that job. And oh, how is it going? How are you doing, man? I was like. Dude, I'm sick of this. I'm leaving Portugal. I'm jumping ship as soon as I can. I'm right? doing for something work I do, similar, actually. But go yeah, on. For the work I do, I'm, I'm being so underpaid. I hate this. And I think also he, he had a reverse culture shock. He just doesn't, uh, he just doesn't feel right anymore. Um, for my own experience, I mean, it's not that I made a lot of money out there. Uh, especially based on local, um, you know, salaries. I didn't make that much. I just made more and I could pay my own apartment. That's that's the biggest thing. Like you can actually pay, you can live by yourself. And in Portugal, it's just impossible. Yeah. And apparently, yes, be funish, francesinhas. Um, well, <laughs> sure. What uh, are you talking about? Be... Oh, Sonny's talking about all the benefits of uh, Portugal. Yeah, bacalhau abraço, beaches, the language. Uh... I mean, Portugal is a very friendly country to live in. Like you can say that like foreign countries usually feel very um, um, very insular in their culture. Portugal feels like it's very accepting. You can go anywhere and speak your language and there will be a motherfucker that can talk right back at you. And uh, I'm actually kind of proud of that, uh, of how versatile uh, this our Portuguese culture is. Like we're, we're proud of our history, most of it. Like we have we have a rich backstory, but we're not obnoxious about it. Oh no, we're not proud. I think Italians are proud. Like you talk to an Italian about their and food. And French and uh, the. Oh yeah, about their cheese. <clears throat> is 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 uh, like is Italian pasta and uh, French cheese like Portuguese uh, bacalhau? 
I mean, I suppose, but to be honest, I like Portuguese cuisine a lot. So I, I always get annoyed when they, when, they, when they regard as, oh, the French cuisine, ooh, the Italian cuisine, they are the best thing in the galaxy, and anyone else is just a mere peasant compared to the masterpieces of Italy and France. Now, Portuguese cuisine is goddamn good. You can say that it's very greasy and it's very meat-heavy. Yeah, we don't have a lot of vegetable varieties in our, in our dishes. But gosh darn, bacalhau con natas, francesinha, or, or pastries are miles better than theirs could ever be yeah. yeah but i think you know uh, the reason is like portuguese people aren't obnoxious about how the food is supposed to be no like if you want to do things differently that's fine that's your choice but like italian at least i don't know french I, i'm not too familiar with how they how they uh deal with their food but i think italians are very very proud of their food and like it has to be a certain way like no, uh, no, no, what, what is that, Seb? No, 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 that tone of color is not right. It has to be this way because this is how it was made originally in Italy. Yeah, yeah, because my ancestors always did these. Oh, uh, yes, fuck so off, Mario. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think in Portugal people, you know, if you want to add, I don't know, whatever it is you want to add to your bacalhau, that's, that's your choice. Like, yeah, it becomes fine. your family recipe. Yeah, like, that's not how we do it, but, you know, go ahead, enjoy it, yeah. Alex says the French can be kind of pretentious about the way they cook. Well, I don't know. I, probably. I, I wouldn't know, but I think, yeah, Portuguese people aren't as much. Like, yeah, you want to you wanna put cinnamon in your pasta? Go ahead. I, I've, I've, I've met people who do that, so, you know. Cinnamon in your I, pasta? I, what sort of animals do you deal with? Jesus. I don't even there know. are I rules. Even, <laughs> I haven't even tried it, but uh, it's, it's not very interesting to me. But you can. You can. Oh, I hope we don't have any Italian watchers. They're going to have a heart attack. I used to have Italian watches, but I uh, haven't had one for in a, in a, in a hot minute. What, you have been talking about pasta a lot and they got offended? I think so, probably. It's only a matter of time and... <laughs> it's only a matter here, of time until I shit talk. I love pasta, by the way. And popular opinions, here you go. Pasta with cinnamon is best. Oh my I've god. I've never tried it. I, I'm just trying oh to, <laughs> to make me controversial here. That's too controversial. We have... We're, we're, we obey the laws of men in this stream. Oh. I saw a bunch of Italians absolutely attack a dude for the way he made mozzarella cheese, Alex says. Oh, makes sense. I don't even know how you make mozzarella cheese. How to make it, I don't know. But yeah, the Italians, every single one, as soon as you're born in Italy, the, you get slapped with a cooking book. And you're not allowed to leave the house until you learn how to make a, a pasta primavera. And you have to make it al dente, that's the most important part. Yes. I mean, to be fair, I am, I am kind of adamant about the al dente part. It is better. Like, like they cook yeah, I, well. I don't like overcooked pasta. I don't like overcooked pasta. It's just not good. Yeah, just a sticky little wet noodle. And by the I, way, I love pasta. I do think the Italians did they discover the secret of it. They, they it is an amazing cuisine. It's just their 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 presumption about it. No, you don't know the true way of cooking pasta. You have to clap your hands twice and go around the chicken and then you can put the cheese on top of your mother and it'll make the pasta taste delicious. Dude, what the? Okay, uh, if you say so. I learned it from the best. Uh, I love this stuff. This is great. We're definitely going to polarize our, our, our stream with this. Like, you're, you're, you're offending a lot of Italians now with your accent. I'm, I'm sure of it. And people like, I have a friend like... Uh, what is it? A few days ago, there was apparently a Mario movie trailer, and, oh. and we came here to play board games. And the guy was literally sitting here. Oh, guys, uh, I have to take this. This is very important. I have to watch the trailer. And he literally just just like disappeared mentally, <laughs> watching the Mario trailer video. This is very it important. Disappeared for mentally. Me, okay? Give me a moment. I'll be right with yeah, you. Yeah. He said, "Like, uh, I'm gonna have to use the bathroom. Just be right back." Mm. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Mario's Italian, right? Isn't he? He's Japanese Italian. Yeah, yeah, he's he's Japanese Italian. That 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 perfect mix, that perfect blend. Alex is saying like the Bifana's whole thing is that it's super simple. Also, don't call it authentic. Butcher the Bifana if you want. I don't care, but don't call it authentic. <laughs> you know, Bifana is just it's it's not a, a food, right? It's not it's not a, it's not a, a exclusively Portuguese thing, is it? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there. I, I just happen to know for a fact that in Port there is a restaurant that is known for its bifana. Also, I feel like like mm. there are certain dishes that is like emblematic with Portugal, like preg no prato. That is a steak with an egg on top. That's not a culinary masterpiece. That is, you didn't need a fucking Albert Einstein to discover that fantabulous mix. You 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 got a little bit of a steak and you put an egg on top. 
Way to go. But apparently that's a Portuguese dish and it's unheard of anywhere else in the world. Like, what? They put the egg on top of the steak? Those barbarians, those heathens. All right. Yeah, just people people aren't very pretentious with food here, right? I think that's the that's the main thing. Anyway, it has been like almost two hours. All right. Now oh, I really be. like I really like uh, how Kim Jong Gi is looking. He's oh, yeah. looking like a real person now. I do think I want to wrap things up because I'm one for one getting hungry. <laughs> you do you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was good. Good. Um, so any any. Final words you want to say before I go? Do we do the outro? What's happening? Uh, I'm going to leave you guys. Do everyone, everyone watching right now, do yourselves a service and go watch uh, King Jong Un. The whole reason behind this podcast Kim is Jong because Kim, Kim Jong Un. Jong- 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 yes. Oh my God. Not King Jong Un. No. Not Kim Jong Un. Come back. No, don't go. Don't go. Come back. <laughs> now we're controversial. Now we're controversial. <laughs> uh, like, do yourself a service and go check out King Jong E. He is. He was an amazing artist, amazing comic book artist. His talent was surreal. He he made am- amazing art pieces effortlessly, without reference, out of the top of his mind. And he was much beloved because he just enjoyed uh, drawing so much. He sadly, tragically, died, passed away at the age of 47 this week. I think he died like on Tuesday or whatever. Uh, while he was traveling from Paris to New York. And uh, it's, I think it's a huge loss to the world of art because he is genuinely one of the masters. He, this guy is one of the best artists out there. I, Sony is asking for specific works on YouTube. He, like he has, like he's, because he was a comic book artist, he has mangas and stuff, but what he's really known is just for going to universities and they give him a wall and say, yes, just paint the wall. And he just goes, he just goes mad. So honestly, just write King Jung Gi on YouTube and you will see like interviews, you'll see his artwork, you will see how actually warm and beloved he is and how cool he used to be and uh, just how amazingly talented he is. He is genuinely, uh, he was one of the masters. Like last, uh, the previous stream we're talking about how I, I actually said that Da Vinci painted the Sistine Chapel. Obviously it wasn't Da Vinci, it was Michelangelo. I had to recheck afterwards. <laughs> but Michelangelo was one of the great masters of the time. King Jun Ji was one of the masters of our time, and he died before everyone, anyone noticed it. And that's a huge shame, a huge loss. Right. Oh, I, you know what? I think we we said a lot, uh, quite a few controversial things uh, today in the previous episode. So it's good. We're we're gonna we're gonna start polarizing the community. Mm-hmm. It's great. People are gonna talk about us soon enough. Uh, Jordan Peterson is gonna talk about us. You know. Nice. Knows? Well, you know, he's like, oh, you know, these two young kids, they haven't discovered the uh, responsibilities in their life. They're just having fun or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't know what he can't wait to about. piss off uh, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, great, great, right? Um, great guy, by the way. I mean, uh, at least his speeches make sense. I don't know if he's a great to be guy. honest. Maybe he's dick. <laughs> he he seems yeah he seems to get a uh, too up on his own uh, paint. Like he he huffs his own smoke too much, you know. Mm. I, I do enjoy his speeches. I think he has some interesting analytical like reasonings behind his uh, his his thoughts. However, yeah, the dude really he he knows that people want to watch controversy and he does he's not afraid to go on Twitter with like catchy dead li- headlines that are meant to provoke and to right. cause debate because they're basically being taken out of context. That's what we'll do. So, Sistine yeah. Chapel Da Vinci? No, no, next. no, 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 it's Michelangelo, <laughs> Michelangelo, it was Michelangelo. And uh, I think we'll just wrap it up. Um, anyway, this was Artistry Podcast. Oh, wait, that's not how you go. How do we go, Sev? Anyway, I am never Jay. know. I'm Sev. I am Jay. I'm Sev. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's try again. Okay, All right. Let's try again. Okay, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Jay. I'm Sev. Artistry Podcast. Signing off.